Namaste. So as we have seen 1926, to be precise, 24th November 1926 was like a watershed moment in this entire journey that the mother and Sri Aurobindo had taken. Though outwardly it's their journey, but as we have seen, they have, this was a journey of the earth in its next ascension. So in that process, their whole effort was how to make um, this earth a field for manifesting the divine in all his splendor and perfection. So this was a new yoga that they had prepared for earth and man. And the purpose of this yoga is not to just find the divine and enter into a state of moksha, lay, nirvana or whatever else we may say with the divine and therefore be done with life and death and rebirth. But its purpose was, the very purpose for which earth and creation have come into existence and it is to manifest the divine. So manifesting the divine involved two movements. One is one has to find the divine. Obviously one cannot speak about manifesting the divine unless one has found the divine. And the second was that the preparation of nature and the instruments. So that when the divine manifests, these instruments respond without breaking down. These res instruments respond with perfect plasticity. They can endure the inrush and the onrush of the divine creation or the new creation. They can be plastic enough. They are full of faith, enthusiasm, joy, peace, wideness and all else that is needed to manifest the divine. So this was a double movement. And this involved not just a question of few human beings, but the entire earth, meaning thereby all the forces that have come into existence so far that have molded the earth. Right from the dark subconscious forces, the inconscient which has a hold on earth. And all these forces are here to stay. They have not gone away. They are the previous guests. And these are the previous guests. guests so they own the house. They, they don't uh, allow. When the divine comes, they say, but we are the ones who are the owners. So they want the divine also to be the tenant. Though they have been, if we want to put it, given on lease. Earth has been given on lease to these forces because they had a role to play. For instance, the Rudra forces were necessary to need earth nature when it was very hard. But once they come, they don't want to go. And so on and so forth. So it was very challenging because all these cosmic forces are at once universal, at the same time individual. So between the two of them who are one, they adopted a strategy. The strategy was Shobindo took charge of the cosmic working. So he would work upon the cosmic field, upon the cosmic forces. And the mother, she took charge of the individual sadhaks who were the, to become the ultimate hubs and centers for manifestation. Of course, it's not a compartmentalized task, but for the sake of making it easier. So we see that from 1926 onward, the yoga took a new turn. In a way... Even when Shirobindo writes the synthesis, he, he says the same thing. The faith and the will, the persistence of the idea, opening to the divine Shakti. But now it becomes more and more focused on opening to the mother. So one of the first gifts that Shirobindo gives, he has given many gifts, but that we'll speak of some other time. But one of the gifts that he gives us in 1927, published in 1928, is the mother, the book, The Mother. And that book became the now the foundation or the Bij Mantra of Integral Yoga. What is there in that book? Essentially open to the mother with plasticity, consciousness and surrender. Walk the path with the triple fire of aspiration, rejection, triple labor of aspiration, rejection and surrender. What we should cultivate is sincerity and endurance. So this was the basic path open to the mother, become receptive to the mother. So many letters of Sri Aurobindo, he says, if you can open to the mother, all else is done for you. She does everything. Because if we read the path that Sri Aurobindo had taken, uh, we read it in records on yoga, it seems impossible. But when we read the path that mother had taken, it's very different. 
and it is she they were arrived at the same goal but shri bindu had to arrive at the complete perfection as far as an individual is concerned he had to open every possible door and window so this was a work that he had done but he knew that human beings cannot follow this path and therefore the mother and then the whole thing was whether we can open to the mother or not but opening to the mother sounds very easy and simple but it implies many things opening to the mother means i refuse to open to all other suggestions all other forces all other distracting and diverting influences being receptive to the mother meant that i will not allow other influences to work upon me it implied obedience surrender implies obedience there is no surrender without obedience now obedience we know is so difficult in human nature which is full of rebellion it implied faith because when you open to the divine mother she has her own way she does not work like a human being and she has her own way so when she will work we will need faith in that course of the journey many things may come things pleasant things unpleasant things which may may like things which may not like things which were part of our original format of life and things which are not at all part of the format of life so one has to endure with faith so open to the mother included all these things so this not so easy though it is the easiest that the yoga you know could be done because ultimately it implies all that you have to do is open to the mother the rest will be done by her so initially a group of people they started coming and with that the mother started creating a force field so what the ashram is it is in physical space and time a force field they have created and the purpose of this force field is for the to facilitate the practice of integral yoga it is one of the greatest gifts that mother and shri bindu have given the ashram is not an institution institution is a framework meant to uh, you know manage the outer life uh, there is money there is this issues problems but it is a force field and anyone who enters here can experience it anyone who starts living here experiences the intense pressure of this force field and what is the purpose of this force field to transform meaning thereby it brings out everything that is hidden inside us because the power that is undertaken the transformation is the power of truth truth consciousness and nothing can remain hidden so it become very difficult so yes the world is here all people kinds of people because shivinda wanted to take up all the problems of humanity uh, not just all goody goody people all saintly people every problem they have undertaken taken over themselves because the whole earth is here the world is here all specimen and samples of the world are here but one condition not random and pelmel provided they have faith in the vision of shurbindu and the mother and provided they are ready to open and surrender to the mother if neither of these at least they are willing to work and through work open to the mother this were the condition for coming to the ashram then all the rest would be done if the sadhak had less uh, challenges uh, in a certain area that part would blossom very fast if the sadhak had um uh, great difficulties in certain other parts everybody is a mix of that the mother used the word shadow that part would require a much longer um time because you know it has to be slowly molded so this was the idea and as i said it was not an ashram meant for all and sundry it is not an ashram which is meant to be an escapist ashram not an ashram where if you are tired with life you come here in fact mother says if you cannot take the challenges of outer life you can cannot take the challenges of the inner life which are far more exacting so but this ashram was meant as a special field for experiment in the spiritual laboratory of shri bindu and the mother for an evolution of a higher kind and what what was the purpose of this evolution the purpose was that now man can manifest the divine without any veils even now we manifest the divine there is no other way but all distorted that's why the world is what it is the creator it has emerged from the creator but there are many 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 uh, beings entities gods titans Uh, all kinds of forces which have gone into the play which operate in creation which operate in human beings and they distort each makes the creation or the original impulsion of the divine will a little little it tampers with it until what comes out on the surface is we know the result it's like 
when a government gives a large fund of money uh, to build a bridge so what happens by the time it reaches the village the build is bri- b- the bridge is built but only on paper but there is no real bridge so now the new policy is direct transfer to account so this was a way where we did not have to go through the gods direct transfer direct transfer means directly connect to the mother and she will do the needful otherwise we see in, in older yogas either you go through this via media or that via media uh, or through uh, even the gods or through a human guru but here it is the divine mother who is embo- she is not a guru she is the embodiment of the um, supreme mahashakti and therefore the creatrix herself has come and put on a human body so there is a difference of relation apart from the fact that to relate with her as a mother uh, is very different from relating as a guru guru guides instructs uh, he initiates tells you a method but what does the mother do a mother can never abandon the child mother conceives the child forms the child gives birth to the child gives the child the freedom to walk the way yet is watching over the child <laughs> covering with wings of you know protection grace the mother can even give a little uh, jolt to the child if that is needed to turn him back on the path and yet all through the mother's life ask any mother she will say that when i had the child my life was centered around the child so this is because they carry something of the divine mother so the relation is very different uh, why i'm saying is because of course one can relate to one's own uh, spiritual guru also as mother but that's a different thing altogether here it is that he will still instruct you and maybe will have certain affection and motherly feelings certain amount of care but here it is the divine mother who is the mother of the universe she herself takes a human form in a perfect embodiment and she molds because there is no other way we can transform this earthly life so this was the process and because it includes the entire range of earthly life so this ashram is very different from all other uh, places which bear the name so here we don't have a meditation hall why because all life is meditation here we have a very elaborate playground why what is playground got to do with yoga because when we manifest the divine or the divine manifest in us and through us the mind has to be ready to receive a narrow mind a small mind a hard mind a rigid mind cannot the heart has to be equally supple and vast to receive the divine love the life force equally has to be luminous powerful strong and the body because the last point of manifestation is the physical so if the physical is not strong physical is not ready not capable then the divine manifestation cannot take place so here we have everything playground gymnasium each has its own history so i'm not going into that because that's a different subject on the whole Uh, history of the ashram and all that it contained i think there is a talk already on the ashram so uh, it has uh, you know coloring section marbling section for instance it has painting department where people learn it has music it has a school where a new kind of education is being practiced uh, it has agarbatti books um, of course the dining room i shouldn't forget and uh, many many other small little activities uh, pottery pots being made uh, many things are being made here handmade paper uh, carpentry uh, the place where they make weaving section then the place where they make uh, all these engineering kind of products harpagon so every kind of activity of course we have a medical department i shouldn't forget so what is the purpose of all these departments for instance why we need a medical department normally in ashram you need a medical department only to heal okay when sadhaks are there when they have a problem they can go to the dispensary and uh, sometimes i i mean olden times ashrams had a gurukul where school was there but after that you normally see ashrams are there where some kind of vedic teaching may be taught but here there is a full fledged school where every kind of subject is being taught so what is the purpose of all this the purpose of all these was not just to maintain a structure of life framework of life but the whole idea was that each framework of life each field of life has to evolve and ultimately be moved by the divine consciousness meaning there why it's a big tall order for everyone has it reached close to that that only the divine mother would know for example to each department each human being 
connected in this yoga, she sends an inspiration. We have these four powers of the mother. She works like that. A general inspiration, Maheshwari. Then we catch the thread of this inspiration, whether we receive it rightly, wrongly, and then we continue with that activity. Supposing we are, uh, the ego starts leading us or misleading us and we close our door, then there is a Mahakali, sudden interventions which can change the course of things, individually and collectively. Things which we may not like, why this is happening. But And then in spite of all these ups and downs, people have to stay. And why they stay? Because of the charm of Mahalakshmi. So whatever happens, people continue to stay. Right? Because charm of Mahalakshmi that endures forever. And then in every detail, she starts entering. So you can't say, now I'm in an ashram, I'm going to have a rest and relax and now... It's a retired life. There is no retired life here, incidentally. But what is important to understand is she does not do the work for us that way. Because people, I am saying this because people have this misunderstanding. For example, it's the mother's school, Ashram Center of Education. So people often ask why the school is like this, why the school is like that. They have their own understanding, misgivings, whatever it is. But the important part is she is not making it perfect and serving us on a plate. She is giving the inspiration. Now, each one has to pick up, each teacher, each person who is involved has to pick up that thread and in his own way, it's a journey now. Same with medical department. We are very far from the original healing idea that the mother would want us to manifest. We do not, because we are still stuck with the old world idea, the same medicine, vaccines. But why she would not say, okay, from today, do this practice, do that practice, because then it's not evolution, but a superimposition. That's the difference. She can just say, okay, from today in this department, you will not use this medicine, you will not do that. No, she doesn't do that. She allows us to evolve along the lines which our nature is prepared. And if we keep open, therefore, we will begin to manifest all these. So we have different activities which have evolved. One such thing is like Nama. Nama itself is a venture which came like that. That new ideas in medicine and health along the lines of the mother and Sri So like that, there are in, in a field of education, she has given many new ideas. Now it may manifest here, it would certainly manifest here, but it can also manifest somewhere else. That's the beauty of this idea. It is not confined here all over the world, but the initial experimental laboratory is the ashram. And why this is not only the initial, but will always remain the original seat, because it's the seat of the tapasya of the mother and Sri And most importantly, Sri used the word, the place of central influence. So people who were practicing the yoga outside, there are plenty of, have been always number of people who are disciples of Sri and the mother living outside. Sri letters are there. So it's not that one has to join the ashram to be a disciple. Equally, it is not true that everybody who joins the ashram is a disciple. Okay, vice versa also applies. <laughs> so, all those who declared themselves, the mother has used the word, declared themselves in their heart as disciples of Sri And here also she says there are two categories. One is the intellectual disciples. Intellectual disciples means they read and they, you know, try to understand. The second, who are ready and willing to follow and are ready to undertake whatever the difficulties, trials and challenges on the way. So this is the two kind of, so this whole process is very different. It's not like you come to ashram and somebody will initiate, the work is given. The inspiration will come from mother. Now how we respond is where our perfection lies. And it's a long, long rope. Because um, she, her work is not a hurried work. If you read how Mah Mah Saraswati works, she is very, very patient in dealing with human nature. So this is the way ashram has been created as a first force field. But then naturally, as this Yagya Vedi, I use the word this, the Maha Yagya Vedi, Agni Kund, uh, Central Agni Kund, this, this Yagya Vedi will remain forever. Uh, you know, because it's meant to... Um, bring out in every Yagya Vedi, what was in Yagya, people put uh, offerings and out of the Yagya we'll see all kinds of beings and forces started emerging. So this is how, this is a Yagya Vedi where people put their consciousness and that much emerges back, transmuted. You put raw, uh, raw base metal and it comes out purified. Now how much we put and to what extent we are ready to go through the fire of purification and transformation is left to each one. There is no compulsion that way, uh, depending on the state and all that. So this is the Yagya Vedi. 
Now, in this Yagyavedi, when it started, everything went very fine from 1926 to 1938. But the forces got the wind. They had tried to stop 1914, but now the mother is here. 1920, 24th April, when mother came permanently, she said, it is the tangible sign of the sure victory over, decisive victory over the adverse forces. Because now the divine and the Shakti have come together. So they tried to create turmoil and ultimately the shadows of the war and eventually the second world war. Already the world was in turmoil because in India also freedom movement, several places, revolutions were going on. So the second world war came and Sri participated and declared it as the mother's war. Why? Because one way or the other, it had an impact, going to have an impact on the earth's fate and destiny. Because war looks as war between nations, but there are also wars between two civilizational ideas. There are wars which are ultimately the war of clash of idea forces that a particular civilization or a group represents. So, the idea that Hitler represented at that point of time was the idea that there is no right for anyone to exist except what he understood, misunderstood as the superior type, which was his own people. Nobody else had a right to live or uh, even he did not even believe that they can be converted. Nobody else had a right. And the whole earth must be occupied, possessed by, dominated by this whole idea. Whereas, they were the others who said, no, no, live and let live and let everybody blossom. So, <laughs> at least there the evolutionary path was open. And therefore, we see Sri and the mother put their whole um, power behind the allies, allied forces. Which many people in India didn't understand because they thought Germany is a good guy. Why? Because he's an enemy of England and England is enemy of India. Therefore, they had read Chanakya's Niti, they had not read Vyas Niti. This was the difference. So, Chanakya Niti is very, very practical oriented, result oriented. Vyas Niti is dharma oriented. And Sri says that India deviated from Vyas Niti when it took hold of Chanakya Niti. Chanakya Niti was alright at its time, it's, it's very good, without a doubt. But the original Niti that Vyas gives, when we understand the war, from the perspective of war, it's always a dharma yuddha. It's not about winning or one side winning because of a personal grouse. It's about dharma ultimately being victorious. So, Sri and the mother adopted Vyasaniti. Dharma must win and dharma must remain upon earth. If Hitler wins, then everything else we know. That time nobody knew but Sri and the mother had seen all this. What is happening inside? It was a veritable war with all the forces of these four asuras we spoke about and eventually the allied forces won and India got freedom. Did it mean now that the asura is gone? No. Mother and Sri knew they will take other instruments. They have taken a beating. So now there was this problem. The war has ended 45 or around that time. India has become free but the asura is still there. And the world has not yet seen the new consciousness which they wanted to manifest. They gave the name to this new consciousness, supramental. To make it very easily, uh, very easy, the supramental consciousness is the consciousness of the creator. When he enters into the creatrix mood, his creative mood, if you use the word mood, or creative force, it means omnipotence, omniscience, through which he governs this creation, unleashes a million forces and forms. That's why it is regarded as the sun. And these forces and forms, impelled by the truth, are going to work, you know, are going to create. And as we know, as they go further and further, create, the, it becomes more and more distorted because these forces, out of them, come out sub-forces, being, original beings, then sub-beings, etc., etc. That's a whole story. So, invariably, the creator works from behind the veil. Why? Because we are not ready. So, there is always the creator upon earth, but he is hidden behind the veil. Veil of mind, heart, life and body. Traditional yoga, cut through the veil. Here, keep on making the veil thinner and thinner, wider and wider, supple and supple, till there is the direct action of the creator on the creation. 
So that's why he, they have used the word divine. Supramental is divine, but divine in all his splendor and in the mode of now he is taking this towards creation. He has turned towards creating. That's what the supramental divine is with all his splendors and powers. So human consciousness cannot bear it. And meanwhile, these forces had descended. Why they had descended? Because, well, our humanity was not ready for this kind of a great adventure. So what did Sri do? He started looking into the deeper causes. He knew it that human beings are still attached to these very asuras at their, in the bottom, by the inconscient. They are still very much stuck to the roots. So they don't want to a new creation. They advocate, of course, we are near mother and Sri we want a new creation. But they want to continue with the old ways. Why? Because the forces that hold the earth, all the four asuras. Somebody asked the mother, Mother, why don't you just annihilate the asuras? After all, we have stories. Mahisa Surmardini, Khan, Kali, destroying. Divine Mother, who has all the beings, she can destroy it. She says, my child, if I do that, all of you will be gone. Why all of us will be gone? Because all of you are the ones who are harboring them. You cannot destroy without destroying all that feeds on these forces. So this was a big challenge. This was one problem. Second was that supermind had not yet descended. So if supermind, that means the unveiled divine could be established in the middle of creation, right in the forefront, not just in the body of an avatar, because avatar, they are avatar, as long as they are there physically, supermind is operating upon earth. But at some point, if the body does not get transformed, they have to withdraw in the background. It doesn't mean they have gone forever. They cannot. But they withdraw into the background. Then, the super mind, if it is not established, then what happens? After the avatar withdraws, over a period of time, things turn into a religion. The force tend to wane. So, they knew, if the body could be transformed, wonderful. Then there is no need. But if the body could not be transformed because the body is formed still by the old means and it is dependent on the whole world which is around them, they had taken all the human beings within themselves. And therefore, the other way was that supermind should be established upon earth. Then even if they withdrew, the work was done. That's what happens on 29th February 1956. But before that, Sri gave a strategic sacrifice. He entered into the dark inconscient, started shaking these roots of inconscient, drilling into it, pushing into it the supramental consciousness, which anyways he was holding within. That's why we see that five days the light continued to uh, remain with his body. That's another chapter, again a very detailed subject which we have touched upon. But when the mother saw that Sri Aurobindo has given this strategic sacrifice, she took upon herself, like a run chandi, she plunged right into the middle. She started preparing the sadhaks on a super fast pace. So, one of her gifts, as I said, ashram is one gift. And then the second gift is, all the wonderful words of guidance, they are not just words of guidance, but carry her consciousness. The first was 1929 to 31. The mother gave everybody a, what this yoga is about. But from 51 to 58, she keeps taking classes and Wednesday classes, Monday classes, Friday classes. They were not just classes. She was pushing her consciousness into the mind and heart and the very body of the disciples. She had tried this earlier also, before 1926, there used to be a soup ceremony. So there were few people who were around and the mother would drink the soup, just a, she would taste it or look into it and then it would be passed all around. She used to pour something of her subtle physical consciousness into it. And the disciples didn't understand, they just took it as a ceremony, a ritual. Some understood, but someone even remarked this is unhygienic. And the whole ceremony, the whole process stopped. What a loss. It was directly the mother's very subtle physical being transferred to 
those who were around many such games she played from balcony darshan to flower darshan gifting of these blessing packets those flowers touched by her in hundred ways through mother's music she gave this kind of uh, you know new kind of music which doesn't fit into eastern or western uh, but it's a music which awakens each music has a certain movement she has even given given names to her music marching in search of the soul aspiration in the physical concentration meditation so there's different kinds of music which she has given and through these music she was giving something of herself into us by playing with people tennis mixing around through every department carries a stamp it was not just she was teaching she was infusing her consciousness into the disciples that this is how things should be done it was not so much mental but the fact that she was interacting she was moving amidst earth and men there is a line in savitri where she bindu says a prodigal prodigal of a rich divinity all she was she lent to earth and men a wide self giving was her native act hoping her greater being to implant upon earthly soil so she was giving so if you see the soul ashram it's everything here is a gift of her grace there are so many things the signatures mother and shobindo signed books everything it's not just a signature her sarees when she has given now we have those pieces which are well available later on even shobindo's relics which went to centers everything it was just they gave and gave first uh, place where they never asked money give me money so that i can build this nice museum people gave money because people participated in number of ways in the yagya one of them was the dravya yagya they gave money but that's a different story but it was giving 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 as if the mother and shobindo knew nothing else except giving and there are countless stories i could go on as i said if you look at her routine just the routine of the mother Four o'clock, she would be up and about. She would be when she goes to the bathroom. There would be certain chits which have been kept, questions, issues about disciples. She would be working on them. She would get ready. Then she would come out. Department people will come from four thirty onwards. They are coming sometimes even four onwards. So three o'clock she would be up and about morning, and then she would be working on those. Uh, um i would name this part as a day in the diary of god's routine okay so <laughs> so department people will come they will say take a blessings they would go then 6 o'clock is balcony darshan and after that again she would go to different places there would be vegetables there would be flowers different departments she would there would be interviews with people there would be letters to be replied then there is something to be prepared for sure bindo she would give he carry the food for shirbindo what food is he going to take he is like a child shirbindo is waiting when the mother will bring food he will eat what did it mean sometimes 9 o'clock sometimes 11 o'clock sometimes 1 o'clock and at one time he broke his fast brick fast at 4 o'clock in the afternoon why mother because we know the occult arrangement and things we need not go into that and she was managing every little issue what issues my child is sick what do i do and she had a time for that oh mother i need some tea mother divine mother almighty i need some tea how about my tea okay tea is to be given mother i have i am experiencing this high inner state what is this and she would reply mother i am having this difficulty this problem she would reply she would send a blessings love countless countless i mean to every little penny that was sent to the mother just for information 50 paisa 1 rupee somebody sent on a money order those days she would sign and send it she could have asked the secretary to sign what does it matter people didn't want to know that exactly has mothers received it but she signed why because it was an action when people received the signature the life began to change 
countless stories i i mean if i go into it it'll take days and days and days of each one in the playground meditation she would be present teach everybody and people thought that she is coming to playground for exercise and all she said no you must understand it's to infuse consciousness into the cells of the body physical culture is not just to become a muscular person it is to infuse consciousness why infuse consciousness so that these cells also can engage in yoga never heard people had never heard that she has mother what is this cells we don't even know what is cells this is wait it will be done that she waited she has given hints but then 56 after the supramental manifestation 50 she was withdrawn 5 december 1956 29 february 1956 the supramental supermind manifest till now it used to descend in mother and shurabindo but as i said that was not enough because what happens in case it doesn't end up transforming them for whatever reason then it will begin to wane someone has to be there physically present here to root it formally upon earth it would descend sometimes here and there as an individual phenomena in some sadhaks but then on 29th february 1956 it's described in great detail we have again talks on that the super mind the door between the creator and the creation opened flung wide open so we can use the word if we had to make a movie on it i would say creator unveiled creator was unveiled and his glory his splendor his light his consciousness his force not all at once but little by little to begin with the supramental consciousness came rushing upon earth and from that moment the mother knew her mission is over so she writes in a diary now that the work for which i had come she doesn't declare it right away she has declared it every new year there used to be a message that particular year she gives a message very interestingly 56 first january the message is she would foresee the future and give a message not foresee the future means which political party is going to win no her future meant the ultimate divine future so she gives a message the ad- advent the greatest victories are the least noisy the advent of a new world is not announced by the beating of trumps for january 1956 exactly after you know 60 days there is the manifestation of the supramental similarly in 1955 for january she had given a message and told the disciples the next 14 months are going to be difficult exactly 55 the whole year and two months and the supramental manifested so she was waiting for that moment the moment it took place she knew that her work is over after some time at different points of time after two months she revealed to some people some had the experience that's a different story but eventually she declared that a new light, there was a prayer we spoke about a new light shall manifest upon earth a new world shall be born the things that were promised shall be fulfilled see brought that took out that prayer struck off shall be shall be shall be and rewrote it a new light manifest upon earth a new world is born the things that were promised are fulfilled and so she asked for a sign should she withdraw because now super mind will take care it is decided at occult level it was decided but physically the destiny of earth is sealed that they will in over a period of time just as human beings emerged out of ape so to the supramental being the divine superhumanity divine superhumanity let me always qualify it because superhumanity gives the idea of aggrandized humanity <laughs> the divine superhumanity will one day many walk upon earth just like uh, you know man walked upon earth out of the four legged ape it stood grew erect thought about the sun and the stars and traveled so this new destiny was secured so she asked for a sign this a prayer like that and then she see she says ki do my children still need me <laughs> because she has done the work and then she says yes children need her so she stays and then see whatever else is done after 56 is even this is grace 
And I would say after 56, it's gratis. <laughs> Extra grace. So she, we see that on one side in outer level, Shurabindu society is formed, which takes Shurabindu's, uh, whose one of the work was to take, um, take Shurabindu, the knowledge that Shurabindu has given, exact words I've forgotten, to the world. So this was one of the work. Also from the world to bring the money which is needed for uh, this whole, uh, you know, it was not movement, but this evolutionary process. So this was one of the purpose. Then society gave, uh, centers came up and each of these centers became a Yagyavedi. So she said blessings, she said each center should be like a hearth of perfect sincerity. So each center became like out of this original Yagyavedi, many Yagyavedis. And then places where she sent her relics, Shubindu's relics. So they became very special places where the physical transformation, if somebody is open, he can really take advantage of the, like literally a physical presence of Shubindu in the most material consciousness. So all this she started. Then of course we know that the only branch of Shubindu, Delhi Ashram, many, many things happened. And then finally, Auroville. Why? Because she could she saw that yes, there is there are a section of humanity which are ready, and they can ready means at least they can will go through this process. But there is humanity which has goodwill, which wants to collaborate in the world. But it's like they are seeking for a kind of higher humanity. Let's there be unity, harmony. They seek for these higher things, peace. So she created this field called Auroville. Basic goal is same. Divine manifestation, the supramental manifestation. But this manifestation itself will take place through at two levels. One is where there is a complete transmutation. The other is where there is a higher humanity. That's also needed as a step because much of the other layers of humanity may well go away. So we have Auroville, which he, of course we know had created at uh, 91. Who would be starting a new city? And that city, we know how it's developed over years through all the classes, conflict, difficulties, challenges. Because she continues to be here as a dynamic presence. Just as she said, Sri is present here not only as a consciousness that guides and illumines, but as a dynamic presence. Much more so about the mother, about the transformed body. It's a different subject and I'll not uh, touch upon that. I've spoken about it. But just to give a hint, in one of the places, the mother says, Shurabindu, in his supramental body, she describes that. So, and there are people who have had the greatest privilege or joy or grace of having had the darshan of their supramental body. So, they are active upon earth, guiding this world and the world forces. We know how Shurabindu has even come to certain people and he said, now the mother has taken charge of India and the India's destiny is going to change. Now you see, when she shifted from France to India, was it not a hint that the power, the Shakti, which was operating in Europe and therefore Europe was rising in every way, has now shifted to India and Asia. So this is bound to happen. And these are the occult dynamisms which are operating. And so she gave all these force fields, she gave her music, her conversations are there for all of us. Her constant presence to anybody who is open, to those who cannot open, even for them, she has a whole lot of things which can help humanity just become a better humanity. How to sleep, how to eat, how to live, how to be in the midst of life, how to learn, how to teach. Every field she has filled with her presence, her consciousness and her wisdom. So this, having done all this, she did many other things like in 1962. As I said, she went overboard, out of love. She had leaned into this creation out of love. So because of that love, she stayed on after 56. Then in 58, she ensured that material nature is ready to collaborate. Because supermind is manifested, but material nature may resist, resist for a long time. So she plays with material nature. And at some point, material nature initially is hesitant to accept this new substance. It is looking at it with suspicion, with doubt. Why? Because nature is playing. She is enjoying the way we are. We may think we are dying and being born, but for nature it is plasticine. 
you break and rebuild. She does not want it. So she first convinces material nature. She plays with material nature and suddenly makes her touch this substance. And she finds the game becomes more enjoyable. So it accepts. The moment the material nature accepts, meaning thereby from 60 onwards, if I have used, used a modern language, a secret supramental chip is in every body which is coming after 60. And see how many things started changing after 60, even at the most physical level. And many are going to change. Today man is dreaming of prolonging life for 150 years. People are saying that heredity may not be as rigid as we believe it to be. All this because now there is a new chip which is operating. It's quietly seeping into the material substance and it's becoming more and more operative. This was 58. Then she knew that this journey is not going to be, still not going to be easy because while those who are open to her through the, which is what Sri called as the sunlit path. Sunlit path is to be psychically open to the mother. Meaning thereby obeying her, surrendering to her, having faith, full confidence in her leading, whatever happens. Only mother, no other. <laughs> Sri said, open to the mother, to know that the mother loves you and that's enough. Then go through life. Life is full of everything. This is not a world shunning ascetic yoga. But who, even that is very few. So, super mind is going to give a knock. It's a truth consciousness. Mother said, now we have entered the age of truth and you should be careful because nothing can remain hidden. Nobody would have hid at that time. That now we see that nothing can remain hidden. Institutions are created. Mechanisms means from the eye that is watching you from the sky <laughs> to the little chips in your phone and watches. Nothing can remain hidden. You try to do it, it's not possible. And even otherwise, they will come to the surface because it's the age of truth. And when they come, if you offer it to the Divine Mother, they will be changed. If you don't, if you resist, you will be hit hard. So one of her messages was, men, countries, continents, the choice is imperative. Truth or the abyss, 50 years back, 51 years back. 51, 52. And when she was asked, Mother, what does it mean? She says, because nations are not honest in their international dealings. UN is not an honest organization that time. Now you see all these things are being talked about. All this she has foreseen, worked out for earth and humanity. What nations will do, which way they will go, made it foolproof. That's what Shubindu said. He was asked, sir, you have to bring down the super mind. What is the problem? He says, you people speak like many ignore muses. So, you think I have to just pull the super mind, it will come and everything is done. And then he describes that I have to lay down the wire, wire make sure that the fuse does not blow out. <laughs> Who will receive the super mind? But she saw that super mind is big. Now it is manifested. So it's going to, its pressure is going to be relentless. The world is going to face it. And that it has to face in terms of a choice, truth or the abyss. So, out of still deeper compassion, people are going to fall. She manifested divine love, 62. So, divine love, she says, now it is like a cushion. So, <laughs> when they go through this journey, things will become topsy-turvy, divine love is there like a cushion. It's a whole story we have, we have covered in different places and we'll cover again if somebody has a question, I'll be happy to answer. But I'm not going into its details. But that was also not enough. Now she is all into new creation. On rush of the new creation. 67, it enters into a realizing power. 69, the superman consciousness. Who is the superman? Already she saw to it that a new intermediary species has come into existence. And I think people understand what I am speaking. There is a growing humanity which is human in appearance, but inwardly different in its character, in its understanding of life, in its aims, in its thought processes. Not because they have done some sadhana or yoga, big words, but because something has changed inside. And this humanity is also progressing at a very fast pace. So the superman consciousness, which she said will be like a mentor. 
so what will this mentor do it will help humanity evolve and because of the superman consciousness it will find the way to physically transform the body so she left nothing to chance nothing already shri bindu had given the gift of savitri as the mantra of transformation and the mother worked out everything for the children so 69 when the superman consciousness was born she went still further for the supramental body because at least one body should be fully prepared which is supramental and then she describes the new body that she has formed there are several places the descriptions and disciple asks also so there are interesting accounts but one account which in 1972 we find is the new body of the mother she says it's formed till here and there is some more portion where the work is yet to be done or she did not see it more correctly and then she describes this body in different places she describes there are people who are already being picked up there is a whole description of the supramental ship where people have been picked up and they are being taken for the supramental transmutation say inner journey but it's seen in a vision and she says when i saw the criteria i laughed because the criteria was not at all what human beings value like for instance we value a lot these ascetic tendencies in india or these moral you know conceptions very hard such rules that's not the criteria she said it's all about enduring plasticity openness and she said when i saw i was laughing uncontrollably for two hours she kept laughing and these were human beings which are already picked up she also describes the great flood the deluge which could be and yet was forestalled each of these is a subject so meaning thereby no more pralayas one of the gifts of the divine mother people ask mother what if there is a third world war she said see super mind is here you must know that whatever happens since fourth will only hasten the manifestation of the divine upon earth and don't entertain such thoughts and see how many times world has gone on the brink on push button it doesn't her contribution in the bangladesh war very few people know that it was she who had helped the victory and this a whole document about it in the china war and she says that chinese went back they were more receptive <laughs> she wanted indians to fight but the indians the soldiers were ready to fight but the political establishment was not and many other things she has predicted and foreseen for instance the uh, independence of tibet the breaking of pakistan the formation of a uh, geographical unity between these portions of pakistan which would break up india uh, myanmar problem started there incidentally bangladesh sri lanka all of them will come together and form a confederation they said how things get distorted probably sark was an effort but see what happened because your money goes and emissions come and so it could not but it will be formed so she has not only done things she has uh, so when shurbindo says that he he uh, he speaks about the super mind people say he has prophesied no prophecy is something which you see but she ha- he has done it so when you do something you don't prophesy you are simply saying well here it is so prophecy is when somebody has done and i see it but when somebody has done it and says it then it's as certain as tomorrow sun that's how he had told in 1909 about india's freedom that the sun of india's destiny will rise and overflow asia and overflow the world 32 years before india's freedom the mother had said india's will be free and both of them had predicted it will come in from through very different means than what we can imagine now britain will be compelled to leave india this was their words people may take credit it's a different reason but the fact remains that after second world war britain could not have sustained the withdrew so many many things it's a whole world i could go into and people could go into they just a little window glimpse into all that she has done and all that they continue to do and would still do to ensure that there is a safe passage for the new species because this was one of their problems they saw that these new beings are going to come into existence 
and they are going to be the the normal old humanity is not going to let it be easy they face the danger from whom from their own kind see what is happening now come up with these new ideas new consciousness and how people around suddenly they will see you with queer eyes they feel you have gone mad something is wrong why are you doing all kinds of resistances so they wanted that there should be means of protecting this new humanity that to the mother has created for those who leave their bodies who have turned to mother and shurvindo she has assured that they will not go to the domain of death but to shurvindo's abode in the subtle physical i mean i could go on and on and they continue to do it and uh, well in 1962 i would close with this uh, the mother declared after this divine love descent or manifested she says it is done it is done the deed is done that now everything is safe full proof and complete so i'll close with just one prayer of the mother we can yeah just one moment see what was her agenda what she wanted to give to earth i'll just quickly read that perfect consciousness integral knowledge omniscience power invincible irresistible ineluctable omnipotence these are the gifts she wants to give she doesn't want to give flash the hand in the air and give you a house or a chain she wants to give you these things health perfect constant unshakable perpetually renewed energy but we have to receive the gifts as i said she is not going to give us a ready made food or even if she gives us that we still have to make the effort of eating and be ready to digest it because spiritual indigestion is also a problem the head can go crazy eternal youth constant growth uninterrupted progress perfect beauty complex and total harmony inexhaustible unparalleled riches control over all the wealth of this world for divine purposes the gift of healing and giving happiness what a gift <laughs> give happiness immunity from all accidents invulnerability against all adverse attacks perfect power of expression in all fields and all activities the gift of tongues the power of making oneself understood perfectly by all and all else necessary for the accomplishment of thy work all these gifts she has brought to earth and man but all that is needed is for us to be ready i'll close with this prayer it is the if you want to be ready this is the most perfect way what we should do what we should be a prayer this is the last prayer in prayers and meditations and this is a prayer for those who want wish to serve the divine October 23 1937 glory to the o lord who triumphed over every obstacle she is invoking the divine the lord supreme grant that nothing in us shall be an obstacle in thy work this is our part not to obstruct her working grant that nothing may retard thy manifestation grant that thy will may be done in all things and at every moment we stand here before thee that thy will may be fulfilled in us in every element in every activity of our being from our supreme heights to the smallest cells of the body every cell she was working upon preparing it to receive and because her cells represent the material cells of a human body all who are connected with her she people asked her how are we to do this yoga of the cells she said who told you that you have to do it i am doing it for you it's a very painful process you have to just receive it from me through contagion there are words that you have to receive so uh, everything is about receiving from her directly no middle men required grant that we may be faithful to the utterly and forever we would be completely under thy influence to the exclusion of every other grant that we may never forget to own towards thee a deep and intense gratitude even one of these things just to feel grateful to the divine gratitude 
will open the door and once the door opens she will work in everything it's not that all of these everybody can do it but even one of this one of the places is simply gratitude and that itself opens the door we have to let the divine enter in after that he takes over his kingdom of course if we give it happily willingly <laughs> we are happy all is blissful if we don't give it and it once he enters he is going to take it then wrestle follows tussle follows not a very <laughs> good thing grant that we may never squander any of the marvelous things that are thy gifts to us at every instant it is the lesson of mahabharata people say so many lessons one simple lesson is when the divine will manifest it will fulfill itself if you give yourself willingly and stand on the side of the divine rather than asking the divine to stand on our side be with the divine be on the side of the divine then arjuna and pandava victory will be anyways krishna's if you resist still victory will be krishna's except that you will not have the joy of the victory and the prasad of the victory so grant that we may never squander any of the marvelous things that are thy gifts to us at every instant so many countless are her gifts at every instant you are tired you are exhausted you feel low and in a moment she can uplift us a mother to her want a friend in our difficulties chasing away with a smile the clouds of gloom that assail the seeker a tranquil counselor and friend and mentor and this is at every instant she is available as i said her day would start at 3 or 4 it would close at 2 o'clock at night that's how she was working all day now there is no sleeping hours even then in her so called sleep body sleep she was working in other worlds helping people when they had departed helping them cross over and countless other things which shobinda has written she was working even in those one or two hours she would frequently go into those states and she is so easily available now both of them because now they are every they were everywhere but even in their physical transformed bodies and at the samadhi she has said all that you need to do is go there put your problems along with your head <laughs> i mean whether you put the head or not place your problems there and she washes it off and opens the path grant that everything in us may collaborate in thy work and all be ready for thy realization glory to thee o lord supreme master of all realization give us a faith active and ardent absolute and unshakable in thy victory